that point, uh, they're too tough to eat, really. Like, this is too tough to eat, this stock here. But the way you prepare the stock is just carve off the outside, the harder casing, and the sweeter, softer pith on the inside is what you eat, and you can steam that. So you can really eat any of it if you just know yeah. how to work. Now, not of the whole plant. This plant and many of its relatives contain a chemical called saponin, which is like soap, but it also causes your red blood cells to explode. Oh dear. Um, it does have a useful purpose though, the root of the plant, because it has saponin, you can chop it up and mash it up, mix it with water, and it makes soap suds. It's a natural source of soap and shampoo, They're very easy to use. The leaves are one of the best plants for using for fiber working, mats, baskets, uh, string, I have quite a bit of string down here somewhere. Okay, yeah. All this string and cordage is made from the yucca plant. And even though we have such short leaves, by using a technique of twisting, you can make strings as long and as strong as you want. Okay, here's another one, uh, pretty common. Most of the plants you'll see here are pretty common. So I wanted ones that y'all will be able to recognize fairly easily. This is the buffalo gourd. It makes a tiny little gourd about this big. It has a big orange flower, just like a squash. The gourd itself tastes absolutely horrible. It's bitter. But if you can wash the seeds, you can actually eat the seeds. And it overtakes everything. Yep. It's everywhere. Does it look like a small watermelon? It does. It looks exactly like a small watermelon. You tried eating it last year. Yeah, it's pretty pithy. Yeah. You don't boil it? The no, we were trying to go. We were. We ate it raw. Yeah, and it, it mixed in with our cantaloupe, so we ate it. <laughs> What's it called? Buffalo, uh, buffalo gourd. So what do you can use that yeah. for? Yes, I, I would just go with the seeds because I don't personally. I don't care for the, the little gourd itself. Right. But. Can you use the gourd for anything else? You can use it for making things. You can hollow it out, dry it, use it to hold it as a container. Yep. Uh, here's another common one. It's in the same genus as our lettuce, Lacticum. This is wild lettuce. You can see the leaves look a lot like chicory or dandelions. And it's the young leaves that you want to use. Here we've got one that, now there's several families of plants that contain the majority of the plants in this family. If you can learn these families, they're going to be poisonous. Uh, this is one of them. This is a croton, but it's in the family Euphorbia. And a lot of the Euphorbias are poisonous. This one, however, you can actually use as a tea. It's also called prairie tea. And the leaves are very fragrant. One of the ways, when I go to identify a plant, I always crush the leaves and smell it. Because many plants have their own very unique, distinct fragrance. And at some times of the year, they won't have their flowers, and they won't have their fruits. So the only way to identify them is by their leaves. Many of the leaves look the same, so if you can crush it and smell it, you'll be able to identify a lot of the ones that have a fragrance. Now, here's a tiny version of an edible plant. This one, I wouldn't go after because it's just not yeah. worth the effort. The seeds are too small, there's not enough. Um, but this is a tiny version of amaranth. Uh, relatives of this plant are quinoa, which was one of the major crops of the Aztecs and Incas. There are uh, versions of this plant in like middle San Antonio near Brackenridge Park that are large enough to go after. Now, the seeds are really small, you just rub them in your hands and they'll fall out of their casings and you can use them uh, to make flour or seed cakes or that type of thing. There's a relative of the yuccas. It has much longer leaves. I've got them tied up here, but the leaves are about this long. And uh, same growth pattern as the yucca. It grows on the ground with all the leaves kind of spreading out in a, in a basal rosette. And these are poisonous. This is called Sacuista. The scientific name is Nolina, but it is really useful for making baskets. It's probably one of the best basket making materials around because the leaves are so long. You can kind of soak the leaves, split them, and then use them to make baskets, wrapping them around a core of something else. Okay, here's one out right now. It's one of my favorites. This is not poison ivy, even though it sometimes does have the leaves with three. You'll distinguish it from poison ivy because it has little uh, thorns growing along it, pretty sharp. And usually our version grows along the ground, kind of hugging the ground or climbing up just a little bit. This is the dewberry. It's our version of the wild blackberry. You can see them here. At this time of year, they're just now getting ripe. They start out red, 
and then they turn to a darker purple. When they're black and really squishy and you can easily pull them off the vine, they're done. If you get them when they're red, they're going to be really sour, but if you get them when they're really black, they're going to be really, really can sweet. Can you hold it up? Does it look like a blackberry? Yeah, it looks exactly like yeah. a blackberry. Yeah. Most of them are going to be much smaller than a blackberry, though. Good. And it's called a dewberry? Yeah, dewberry. Can you do anything with leaves? I'm not sure. I know um, some plants like strawberries, which are relative, you can use the leaves as a green. Okay, we're going kind of fast because I don't know how much time I have. How much time do I have? You've got uh, two hours. Two hours? Let okay. us camp out in the parking lot. Great, now I can slow down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is the hackberry. Um, this one, I think it's the netleaf hackberry. We've got several species. Some of them you can feel the leaves and they kind of feel like sandpaper. The berries right now are green. They won't ripen up until late October, November, December, but then they'll stay on the tree till like January. So that's a tree? Yes, it's a tree. Uh, scientific name Celtis, it's for the genus. It's a relative of the elms. And the bark is kind of, it's kind of a whitish, it's kind of smooth with knobs, knobs on it. It tends to grow in areas that have uh, more water, so kind of low-lying areas near rivers. And the name of it is? A hackberry, or sugarberry. The name of the tree is called a hackberry yes. tree? Yes. Oh. Pretty common. Uh, the berries, when they ripen up, they're going to turn either red or orange. They're going to have a, kind of a papery covering, but underneath that is going to be a layer of really sweet pulp. It's not going to be very thick. Very thin layer of sweet pulp, and then there's going to be a hard seed in the middle. You can eat the entire thing, so that hard seed in the middle is going to give you a little bit of fat and protein, carbohydrates, and you're going to have more carbohydrates and sugar from the outer pulp. You can just crunch the whole thing up or pound it up and then use it as flour, mix it with uh, other types of flour as a sweetening. Uh, but this is one of the one of those plants that has enough nutrients that you can actually spend your time going after it. Okay, in this cup we have a bunch of plants that are in the mint family. So these ones are not going to give you calories, but they'll give you vitamins and they're also good for making teas or for flavoring food. This one is called horse mint. And the flowers tend to be a whitish or a purple color. And all these plants, if you rub the leaves and smell them, they'll all smell either like mints or lemons or something like that. Horse mint. It looks a little like bee balm, does it? Uh -huh, same thing. It's, it's a very same plant? Same plant. Many of the plants have white? several common names. The white flower? Yeah, they'll either be white, um, yellow, purple. The, the color can change, but they're all going to be in the same genes. <laughs> can you, can you eat it? Yes, you can. I, w I wouldn't eat it. Uh, if you eat some of the seasoning plants in large quantities, you'll get stomach aches or they can even be toxic. So just use it as a tea or as a flavoring, like um, like you would with uh, cultivated mint. It's called horse mint and bee also called bee balm. Bee balm. Mm -hmm. This one is called mealy sage. Mm -hmm. Again, you can yes. crush the leaves, smell it. It smells like a, it's a mint plant. Mm -hmm. This one, my unfortunately, my flower died. I tried to keep these as alive as long as possible, but I picked them yesterday morning. This one is called cedar sage. It's got a red flower that comes out of it. Used as the same way. Okay. Now uh, this one is edible to wildlife. It's in the olive family. Very common. I brought it today because it's very common. It grows in the understory beneath oak forests. But I don't know whether or not it's edible for people. I have tasted them myself, and they're, they kind of have a bitter, astringent flavor to them. So I tend to avoid this one. Some plants that are edible to wildlife are not edible to people. OK. Here is one of the most common plants around here. This and juniper are probably our most common trees. Everyone should recognize it. This is the live oak. It's called a live oak because it keeps its leaves for most of the year, although it actually does lose them in the spring when it's flowering. And this is one of the major plants that you're going to go after. It's, it drops acorns. All the acorns are going to be edible, but they're going to need preparation to various degrees. You cannot eat most raw acorns. They're going to have tannic acid in them in varying quantities. They're going to be really, really bitter. And if you were to eat them in large quantities, they would give you uh, major kidney problems, trying to filter out all that tannic acid. Mm. So, how do you eat the acorns? When you first shell them, they're going to be a bright yellow color, or a whitish yellow color. And what you can do is you crush them all up, shell and all, and you put them in some water and stir them up, 
the acorn kernels will drop to the bottom and the shells will float. You can just skim all the shells off. That we can crush a lot of acorns at one time. And then you need to get that tannic acid out some way. There's several different ways to do that. Well, one way the Native Americans would use is to just put those, you don't have to make it into a flower at this point, but you just need the small uh, crushed up kernels. Put them in a basket, a loose basket, and put it in a uh, river or under flowing water and just let it flow through there for three or four days. Another way they would use is to bury a large amount in swapping ground and they would also store them and come back and get them maybe several months later.